Too often we hear lawmakers, policymakers, and thought leaders say that we do not have the data. We don't know how to assess what's going on in the states. And we, we have been so fortunate to work with uh, Congresswoman Gabbard and Congressman Curbelo, who have taken the, the initiative to, to step forward and say we have the capacity to get that data. So with, it, uh, with that being said, I want to uh, invite Congresswoman Gabbard to come up and describe uh, the new bill that they are introducing today, the Marijuana Data Collection Act. And folks, uh, in case you don't know what this is, this is a new bill that is being introduced uh, bipartisanly um, by pretty much the same, we'll, we'll get into who's signing on to this right out of the gate um, in a minute, but um, it's basically a uh, information seeking from states that have legalized marijuana to give the federal government uh, the facts about what's really going on there because we keep hearing a lot of, you know, and I hate to keep using the words reefer madness, but that's basically what we're still dealing with coming out of a lot of politicians uh, in Washington, in state houses, um, sheriffs that want to be politicians, prohibitionists, you name it. So all these people that are, you know, constantly saying, you know, fat you know completely baseless uh claims about cannabis um and they have no scientific data to to really back them up uh, and nobody's really actually done any studies on the the um effects of cannabis so we really don't know you know we can go with the anecdotal data which from all the empirical evidence most people can observe says that there's not any uh, reason to believe any of that reefer madness garbage. So this is a good thing going on. And by the way, this video was from Tulsi Gabbard's Facebook page. I ended up uh, downloading it, fixing the audio, and ed edited it down to 10 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and play that first. And then afterwards, I'm going to really quickly, hopefully, go over some of the finer points of the bill. And I don't really have much to say other than, you know, <laughs> you know, it's about time. And the, the only thing I'm really going to say is that, like everything else when it comes to these marijuana bills, in Washington especially, um, the one thing you got to worry about is that it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to get any sponsors. It's never going to go anywhere for a vote might not even make it to a committee, even if it's introduced also in the Senate, which sometimes that might, depending on what it is, sometimes that gives things a better chance of being amended to something else or having a second look by a committee. But as long as it's, uh, as long as the climate in Washington is that they don't want to know the truth, they want to keep trying their hardest to, yell and scream the reefer madness at the top of the hill so that even though the truth is out there the masses are just kind of you know droning along like they do um and believing the baseless uh ridiculous propaganda that they're still pushing so i'm going to stop talking and we're going to let the the uh the people that put this forward take it from here Good morning and Good morning. aloha to all of you. Aloha. Thanks so much for taking the time to come here and join us. Uh, we've been looking forward to this morning and to working with you to launching this important initiative that Congressman Corbello and I uh, are introducing. As many of you know, for far too long, our country's outdated policies on marijuana have been uh, based on and continued because of misplaced stigma and outdated myths that really don't stack up and are not based on any kind of scientific study or facts or statistics. As a result, we have seen a failed war on drugs being carried out for decades, tearing families apart, fracturing our communities at a tremendous social cost as well as economic cost to our taxpayers 
uh, heavily weighing on an already overburdened criminal justice system. All of this because of a substance that is scheduled in the same classification as heroin and cocaine, but is proven to be far less dangerous for oneself as well as on others than alcohol. In 2016 alone, our country arrested over 1.5 million people for drug-related violations, over 600,000 of which had to do with mere possession of marijuana. Now, even though a majority of states already recognize the benefits of medical marijuana, and there have been ample studies and research done, uh, both prior to and after those state legislatures have passed uh, these laws, the fact that at the federal level this drug is still classified as Schedule One is unacceptable. Our federal policy should be based on actual science and fact, not based on feelings or emotions or whether it's something that I or you would like or don't like or feel would be good or would be bad. If we based our lawmaking practices on what Carlos and I either like or dislike, we would be in a lot of trouble in this country. But when we have conversations with folks about cannabis, about marijuana, that's usually what it comes down to. Well, I don't like it, or I don't want my kids to do it, or I would never do it. Rather than understanding that this is really about America, freedom of choice, and civil liberties, facts, statistics, and data. So what our bill does is addresses the heart of the misinformation that is around these conversations by commissioning a nonpartisan, evidence-based report that analyzes the current marijuana policies all across the country, the impacts that they have had on those communities in those states, and provides this information to Congress. This is about uncovering the truth. This is about putting the facts out there so that policymakers can make informed decisions. By the way, this is the Republican um, representative from Florida, Carbano, uh, and that's, you know, this is him. And without question, we have a lot of work to do at the federal level when it comes to marijuana policies. Uh, we have a policy set for mar marijuana that uh, is totally disconnected from reality, that is disrespectful to states all over the country, from Florida to Hawaii to Alaska to New York. Uh, this is about federalism. This is about respecting states' rights. And again, it's about uncovering the truth. Many have manipulated the truth and parroted false information with regards to marijuana in order to pursue a reckless policy agenda. And specifically, I'm thinking of the Attorney General of the United States who has been dishonest, disingenuous, and misleading at best when it comes to this issue. Fortunately, fortunately, members on both sides of the aisle are learning more about this issue and every day are coming to a better place, are coming to accept the decisions that 71% of Floridians made when this was on the ballot in our state and that voters all across this country have made as recently as just a few weeks ago in the conservative state of Oklahoma. So it's very clear that Congress and the federal government lag the American people when it comes to the issue of marijuana. And we're here today standing together with all of you to say we want to know the truth. We want to know what any effects are on uh, the health of our population. We want to know what the effects are on crime. Uh, we want to know what the economic effects are. And notice I'm not saying benefits because we are open to the truth, whatever it is. Now, we've seen in many states throughout the country, indeed, that marijuana for a lot of uh, people who are addicted to opioids, uh, as an example, is an off-ramp to opioid addiction. Uh, we know that uh, it's an alternative uh, to powerful drugs uh, that cause serious addiction. And we just want all of that uh, to be uncovered and on public display for everyone to see. So I'm grateful to Tulsi for her leadership. And uh, we want to encourage all of our colleagues, Republicans and Democrats. This is not a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's an American issue. It's an issue that speaks to our freedom. It's an issue that speaks to the 10th Amendment of the Constitution. We ask you all to join us. Uh, as we seek to uncover the truth, to put out the facts for everyone to see, 
And hopefully that will allow us as federal policymakers to work on legislation that respects that states' rights and most importantly that respects every American and their individual freedom. Thank you very much. When I was a United States attorney, um, obviously you've got to be a lawyer. As a lawyer, you deal in facts. So here we have a former uh, U.S. attorney. <laughs> when you have a case, you can't make them up because you won't be successful. You have to have the facts of any case. We in law enforcement understand that it is a waste of human resource, human capital, of taxpayer money to pursue this po failed policy concerning cannabis. I support this legislation so wholeheartedly because we have to have the facts. We have to move away from uh, these this misnomers of, of what the true information is and what it's been since 1972. Times have changed. And this is one of those cases where the general population is way ahead of us in in, in, from a political standpoint, uh, from a lot of legislatures. When it's open to folks to vote and they understand what the facts are, as the congressman just said, a state like Oklahoma votes it in. I always tell people when you look around, because it's not a red state or a blue state thing, it's an individual liberty issue. It's a Tenth Amendment issue. Our federal government needs to respect our states and the people in those states who choose something that may be different from another state. So I want to do what I can today to uh, help uh, move the legislation, but uh, it, this is a, a, I think this is a landmark moment in doing away with cannabis prohibition. And then there was another uh, district attorney, former dis U.S. district attorney, that he presided over uh, South Carolina, I believe. But I didn't really include any of his speech, so we're going to go on. Thank you very much. And lastly, to close out our remarks is the Deputy Director of Normal, Mr. Paro Montano, who has been working on marijuana policy for over 20 years and is largely regarded as one of the foremost thought leaders in the movement. And you may notice if you watch all my clips, <laughs> which I don't know if anybody actually does that, but I've probably read Paul's uh, work a few times, mainly talking about studies or things going on in the movement. So. Um, he's definitely been just right on top of everything going on for as long as I can remember. Thank you all for being here this morning. This bill is very important, as you've heard, because it is high time that we move in this country from a rhetoric-based marijuana policy to an evidence-based marijuana policy. It is time to move away from this flat earth, anti-science, emotionally driven policy toward one that is common sense and that is based on reality. We now have today at our disposal over 28,000 peer-reviewed scientific studies about the cannabis plant, about its constituents, and about its impact on society. The problem is not, nor has it ever been, we don't have the data. The problem is we have had a policy that is divorced from what the data says. That changes with the, this, the introduction of this bill, that changes with movement in favor of this bill. Facts matter, truth matters, evidence matters, and it should be guiding our marijuana laws. Today, let's hope we've turned the page and legislation like this is going to move us in a direction where once <coughs> again, facts and truth matters. Thank you very much and thank you for the introduction. Advocates decried. Quote, this is not a marijuana bill, it's an information bill. Justin Streckel pulled with reliable and fact-based information to help them decide what direction is most beneficial to society when it comes to the marijuana policies. Um, leading prohibitionist organization Smart Approaches to Marijuana did not respond 
to a request for comment about its position on the legislation. Now, I highlighted that in red because I felt like that was a really important point there. Um, the reason I feel like that's an important point is because this, this uh, bill is basically trying to pull the mask off of every, every plank of uh, Smart Approaches to Marijuana's platform. You know, I mean, they basically push every non-science-based so-called study that there ever was about apparently marijuana and all kinds of maladies. Um, but a lot of times you, when you look at the study for even one second, you can see a problem with it. And most of the time it's because it's not just marijuana that they include in their data set. And they can't because they can't. They simply can't find people that were like, oh, yeah, I just smoked marijuana only for, for decades. It was just never a thing. Um, and, I mean, I'm talking about because tobacco and alcohol were always uh, other things that they were, you know, using in their data sets. But, anyway, getting sidetracked, they need to answer to this. You know, I'm, I'm sure... We can, if if we were really holding a, a politicians' feet to the fire, and if you were like a one-issue voter, and this is the most important issue in your life, um, then you could take this and you could use this as a litmus test for your uh, representatives in your area. You know, your state rep, your rep that, uh, not your state rep, but your uh, your congressman and your senators. You can just be like, yo, how do you feel about this information, Marijuana Information Act? Should we collect data and figure out what's going on in states that have already legalized it? So maybe the federal government can, you know, see what's really going on instead of uh, the high-intensity drug trafficking uh, area reports, which are highly slanted to um, continue to demonize marijuana because quite frankly that's the main thing that keeps the federal government's uh drug war apparatus fully intact at least that's the perception that we're starting to see. i mean i'm starting to get the feeling that they need marijuana really bad to justify the drug war for some reason or maybe they feel like if we knock that domino over what's next you know and really, that is that is what it is, because you know any kind of prohibition, the whole drug war is complete bullshit. The Controlled Substances Act is complete bullshit. We shouldn't have a DEA, but anyway, we shouldn't have a Smart Approaches to Marijuana, starring Kevin Sabat and uh, Patrick uh, Kennedy, because you know you guys should find more productive things to do with your time. You're both smart guys. You have bright futures ahead of you. Just please get out of the marijuana um, prohibition game. It's not working out too good for you. But it would be nice to hear what you have to think about this because you're constantly doing the propaganda, but you're also criticizing real data and inserting things into the conversation to try to make people not believe what's really going on. Um, the sky hasn't fallen in Colorado or California or anywhere else or the 29 medical marijuana states. Or is it 30 now with Oklahoma? I'm, I'm not sure. But we always say these numbers that are somewhere in the ballpark, and we, we can have a conversation about like what really constitutes a medical marijuana state. But I know for a fact that we have more medical marijuana states with pretty good programs or better than just CBD only than than half we're over half so with with that in mind it seems like it would be in the federal government's best interest to actually start figuring out if this is working for people or not because you you know it says right in the schedule one thing that it's got to have no medical use and i mean we're talking about Literally millions upon millions of people are registered medical marijuana patients that use the stuff. And we have all kinds of studies that keep coming out talking about how people use less pills and people use, they stop script prescriptions altogether and even for opioids. So it seems like it would be in their best interest to know these things and to actually have 
have a real science instead of just going on bullshit and uh, it's ridiculous i don't know i see i could probably keep repeating the same thing i'm sorry so gabbard held a tuesday morning press conference with other supporters including uh the gop co-sponsor representative carlos cubero from florida i keep saying cubero but it's curbello and he's a republican and then we have the, okay, so those former U.S. attorneys was Barry Grissom of Kansas and Bill Nettles of South Carolina. And guys, I don't know if you know the map, but those are not blue states. Those are not green states, as you would. Those are red states. <laughs> um, kind of Bible Belt, too. Bible Belty. So other original uh, co-sponsors of the bill include Don Young, uh, Arkansas, Darren Soto, Florida, Beto O'Rourke, Texas, Earl Blumenauer, Oregon, Dana Rohrenbacher, California, Matt Gates, Florida, Peter DeFazio, Oregon, Eleanor Norton, D.C., Dina Titus, Nevada, Charlie Crist, Florida, um, Tom Garrett, Virginia, Lou Correa, California, Barbara Lee, California, Mark Pocan, Wisconsin, and Salud Carb Carballo from California. Um, I'm not going to read this last bit, but this is just basically what they're trying to study into is revenues and state allocations. You know, what are they spending and what are they getting? Let's see the uh, spreadsheets. Medicinal use of marijuana. Okay, the rate of medical use among different population groups. So they want to do kind of like a um, demographic thing, purpose of use, medical conditions most frequently purchased and used for, substance use, the rates of overdoses with opioids and other painkillers, the rates of admission to health care, facilities and emergency rooms, and other volunteer treatment facilities related to overdoses with opioids and other painkillers. So this is a little bit more than just trying to gain uh, information and data about marijuana. Uh, it sounds really intrusive, though, so I don't know how successful they're going to be with any of that. Impacts on criminal justice and employment. So those are all things that if, if you don't trust the federal government, you could say, hmm, they're just trying to find anything they can to put negative uh, slant on cannabis being legal still. You could say that. You could say that this is uh, possibly that kind of a fact-finding mission. And since it is bipartisan, and it will, if, if it did ever come to the floor, get voted on and pass, which I am not thinking, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Uh, if one person that I know for sure that doesn't want this thing to go through, it would be Pete Sessions. So just, you know, short of having like some kind of a monumental flip from Republican to Democrat, like if the whole federal government is still the same condition after November, as far as Republicans versus Democrats in the Senate and the House, this thing ain't going nowhere. And if Pete Sessions is still seated and running his little uh, committee, this bill ain't going to a vote in the Senate if it ever gets that far. So there's my naysaying and all that. Uh, other than that, I think it's it's a no-brainer. This is great legislation. Like I said down here with some of the stuff they're trying to, you know, some of the bones they're trying to pick with it, some of their you know fact-finding missions could backfire on them no matter what their motive is because we all know the truth about cannabis we've been learning the truth about cannabis our whole lives and we know that none of this crazy reefer madness shit's ever going to pan out for anybody 